All right, today we're starting uh, part four of the, the wrecker. Um, we're starting with getting the decals off. My wife has already got all the glue off that front door, and I'm working on the decals on the back here. I got one side done over here. I'm gonna start with this. We're gonna get some repairs done. She's working on the glue. This we are, we're assuming this is a single base paint, so we're using goof off, which or goo gone. Because this is a citrus based, not a uh, acetone or mineral spirits or anything like that. And uh, it, some of these came off better than others, but I, this was the first one I did and there's a lot of glue left. And she's got PUCO numbers, all DOT removed, and she's got it off the front door. So now, I'll tell you what, uh, it really shows uh, all the, the horrible paint, the mess here. and around here but that's okay it'll be all right but uh we're gonna start with getting the decals off i'm undecided about that on that boom you think we should take that off too no, I don't think it's yeah i don't i don't think it is maybe we'll see but uh that's what i'm working on now heat gun and goof off or goo gone or whatever um it's coming off okay if you notice there's lots and lots of lights that were on the pylon the pylon here they're missing um there's a bunch of strobes back here that they've taken off so they're missing you see the hole here and here so i'm gonna see if i can locate that same light whatever it was and see if i can replace them so they're all the same just like they were and i don't have to put any more holes in the body uh, i'm assuming Assuming they're like the front ones on the grill, but I don't know. Let's take a look here. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Who makes these? Maybe I'll take one off and see. Okay, I'll keep going. I don't know if that'll show up well, but that appears to be algae in there. These tanks need to be cleaned out really well before they're used. Um, it's so hard to see in there, but we're going to flush them out and we're going to fill them up with water and make sure there's no leaks or it looks like there might be some something here i don't know if that's just road crud or what but uh we gotta check them out real good before we decide to use them that's looking a sight better my tank cleaner upper is uh hard at it she's using dawn dish soap foam wash. yeah and it's like a foam it so she's got all that just about cleaned up I want to see there's no hidden anything but as you can see she where the steps were you can tell right where those rivets were in the straps that's what i was one of the things i was concerned with but i want to make sure they're okay before we go any farther have them dipped and cleaned and then polished before we put them on i'm going to measure them and see how much smaller they are than the other ones so after measuring this tank against the aluminums they're the same, same diameter, same length. So these ones must be 106, 106 gallons as well. So anyway, I'm filling them up with water so we can test them. Let's we'll see what we find. I want to fill them up almost to the top because the pressure of water, if I just put a little bit in and I move it around, sometimes it won't show up. But when you put all the weight of the water on 
on where the leak could be that that's enough pressure to make a leak show up and diesel fuel I believe is heavier than water lighter than water water is 8.3 pounds a gallon I think I think diesel fuel is just under seven pounds a gallon so this is a better test than diesel fuel well, it's the next morning still there and still there okay see any wet spots I'll look it over really good make sure there's no wet spots but uh, shit if it can hold 106 gallons overnight each tank I think we're okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get these drained out and then I'm gonna take a mirror look inside real good and make sure that uh, we don't see anything if I do see anything else in here we'll take them in and we'll remove the sending in it and then we'll have it uh, we'll have it dipped in a chemical to clean it out if uh, all looks good then I'll call the the polisher guy and see how far out he is and see if he can get going on these if he's too far out I'm, I don't know I I think about polishing stuff myself but god it's so it's so time-consuming and for what the guy will will polish these things for it, it's really not worth I hate to sound like that it's really not worth me stopping what I'm doing to polish all right so in the last video we talked about how flat these leaf springs are they're worn out and there's they should have a, more of an arch to them and <clears throat> the evidence of that is back here if you see that shackle that shackle should be just not perfectly straight up and down just slightly past so it has the inclination to go that way when the leaf string is pushed up because when the leaf string leaf spring pushes up you take the arch out then it's flat it push it, it's more straight so it has has to have a place for that travel to go so we're going to be replacing not only the leaf springs but we're going to do <clears throat> we're going to do the front leaf spring pins the leaf springs themselves the u-bolts the shocks and both of these pins the shackles and probably those leaf spring hangers because it looks like that leaf spring has been banging on the bottom of that leaf spring mount possibly we're going to inspect that here in a minute but uh i need to check the king pins to see if we need to get them at the same time because we're ordering <clears throat> all of this from the guys at ami um i use them specifically for all the internationals we work on but even some of the trucks that aren't international i call them anyways because they can get you know your your general parts that fit other trucks so the next step is i want to jack this up check the kingpins go from there because i want to make sure the front end is right and tight oh we got this this drag link coming too on the pitman arm to the steering knuckle we're going to be replacing that I think the tie rods are okay. If they have any play in them at all, we're gonna replace them. Um, after we get this done, <clears throat> we need to have the alignment checked to see how close the front axle is in relationship to the rear so we can be sure before we make any changes that that is in the correct location. So let's check these kingpins. So we check kingpins. I put, I always put my jack on a piece of old truck frame when it's on gravel so it doesn't sink through and jack up by the axle take the load off the wheel we use a pry bar on just a piece of timber lumber whatever and then we'll pry up on that and that'll show me if there's any play in between there and if so how much go ahead i don't see anything man that's tight it looks like they may have been redone not too long ago yep do it one more time bounce it pretty good yeah, there's nothing there. Okay, this side's good. Let's do the well. Let's check this tie rod. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let this jack down. You're gonna get in there and wiggle that wheel back and forth. So I want the weight of the truck holding this wheel, so it creates resistance to turn to make these move. So the the resistance of this big heavy tire holding the weight of the truck is more likely gonna would show play up in there more likely than if there was no resistance at all. All right, go ahead. 
a little faster. That's tight, but you can see this here. See the play in that drag link there? And there's some right there as well. Okay, now we'll go the other side. This side's good, the tie rod's good, kingpins are good. And then <clears throat> we'll take a light and look up in here and make sure that we don't have any leaking wheel seals up in this area. So I'll have to get my flashlight and look in there. I wanna make sure that wheel seal's not leaking. I mean, the, the brake shoes look new. The drum looks like it's been replaced. The slack adjuster's been replaced. The brake chamber looks good. The hose looks good. Um, the tire itself is okay, and <clears throat> but that doesn't mean it hasn't started leaking, so I want to get a light and look in there real good. All right, I got this side up. I like to steady my camera up against something. Go ahead. I, I've been doing it. It's not moving. Nothing. No. Yeah, they're good and tight. Again, new slack adjuster or newer. Brake chamber is good. I inspected that hose. I didn't see any wear spots on it anywhere. Everything needs grease, of course. And then we'll adjust the brakes, too. And it's probably out. And then we'll look in here at the wheel seal. Make sure it's dry. Again, brake shoes look to have been replaced, as you can see right here. And you see the wear indicators here. We've got plain left. And you can't just look at one side. You really have to look at both sides. Because if if one of them shoes gets stuck, <clears throat> if it would happen to get stuck on the roller that expands it, one can wear more than the other. Okay. All right, we're gonna let this back down and we're gonna check that tie rod right there as well. Yeah, there's nothing there. That's tight. Okay. All right, so our kingpins are good. The tie rods for the uh, crossover bar are fine. Um, we'll have to grease everything good, but I'm gonna go ahead and order up the, the parts. I'm gonna go back here. We're gonna inspect them rear leaf spring hangers. It's probably due for an oil change, I imagine. Which we'll do oil, oil and fuel filters and air filters all at the same time. When we get it, we'll service everything so we know we're good to go to start with. All right, so we're back here at this leaf spring hanger. Boy, is it close. I don't know if it is or isn't hitting that. Maybe not. Um, but we're going to we'll go ahead and order these just in case. If we need them, we need them. If we don't, uh, we can send them back. But uh, we're definitely getting all new pins. We'll look for anything else back in here. It's a... While I'm under here making an issue, got a little transmission leak there. We're going to look and see what model transmission it is, too, while we're down here. And uh, inspect the rest of the front end and the front hangers, make sure everything's okay. Because the last thing I want to do is take this all apart and then have to wait on parts. Because in today's world, you know, uh, parts aren't as easy as they used to, easy to get as they used to be. So it doesn't look like it's hitting that leaf spring mount. But the leaf spring mount is what can wear because that the shackle, one on each side, you can see they have a squeeze bolt. That holds the bolt in place and it turns in the hanger. So possibly that hanger is worn. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. It moves a lot right there. The front doesn't move as much because it's only got a small amount of travel. As you can imagine, just going up, it's pretty small. The rear has far more travel than the, than, the, than the front. Now, since I'm ordering parts, this is uh, something I've been pondering for a little while. Um, I'm gonna have the tanks off, putting the other tanks on, which makes it much easier to do this exhaust repair. I just have to decide whether I'm gonna use this exhaust or if I'm gonna change over to something else. I don't know yet. Well, we're gonna take the wrecker out to see how she does. A friend of mine's dump trucks broke down. He gave me a call, asked me if I could help him out. So, why well, certainly, let's see how the old girl tows. My wife's behind me following just in case I have any issues. But let's go see.
it's the next day after we towed that uh, dump truck for the front of ours, and there, there's a few things I've I realized we're missing. One was a a good light. Um, we got to make some improvements to the truck, but this was this was uh, priceless. A good friend of mine, Omar, sent me this. He actually sent me six of them in these boxes, and uh, I had this one in my wife's van. She had followed me. I'm glad she did, and I'm glad he sent them because that thing was invaluable. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna put one in here and I'll make some changes. I'm gonna make the make sure that 12 volt outlet plug right there works so we can keep it on charge. I I don't know if they come with a cigarette lighter. I may have to get a uh, USB adapter. But another thing we're missing is I thought I put a ratchet binder in here. And uh, I apparently did not, because I was using the frame forks, and I wanted to, I used the ratchet straps to tie the axle down, and I used these two here, but uh, <clears throat> I really wanted, uh, I really wanted to use a chain and a, and a ratchet binder, so we're going to grab a couple ratchet binders and throw them in here too. So I added these two because they're short ratchet binders the body's real short but I'm gonna get the two that uh, that Jesse from Jesse Moffitt from Florida sent me because they have a bend over handle it's, you know, it's movable you can fold it I'm um, gonna put that in there too and I got chains on order and a lot more gear this truck will be so heavy I mean you think that's a lot of cabinets but once I start getting everything in here as it accumulates it they'll fill up fast one thing I noticed is I need to get lights back here I want, I want lights under, I guess under here or under here. I want them to point down underneath what we're working on. And I'd like some up here that can come this way. Because the only thing we have for the back is those LEDs right there. That's it. And then these, these flash, and these, these aren't right. These need to be redone. I need to have a piece of metal made that suits this like so. And then put them lights in there like they're supposed to be and then put some on the side. So I'm probably going to have to have that piece of metal bent up. I'll probably have it done out of stainless. Just have it match this curve. And I'll just put a couple tabs in the corners. And then do all my lighting holes on it. Something like that. Because that's the lights are facing the wrong place. If you're behind me, you can see the ones up there. But they need to be back here better. That's just not good enough. Not for me. So also, I'm either going to put a, a camera up here somewhere pointing down or on the under each I thought about getting one of those magnetic mount ones so that when I'm unhooked and I'm backing up I could put it up here let it sit shining down you know one of the wireless cameras and uh, when we're going down the road I could put it here so you could watch what's going on with the under reach I don't know we'll see anyways right now I got to go over to Justin's I got a truck frame from him he had bought a truck and needed me to go get it with uh, one of my pieces of equipment. So uh, I went and got it for him. He paid the fuel and gave me the truck frame. So that's gonna be on part of another project that we're doing. So let's get moving. All right, so I just picked up this truck frame from Justin. Uh, he had bought this a while ago for a truck he was building, and he was gonna put air ride suspension under the rear, and he ended up selling the truck, so he didn't do the project. But um, he needed me to go pick up a truck that he bought, and uh, we took the rollback and went and got it. And um, since I did that for him, he gave me this, and he paid for fuel. and. Uh, so we're going to use this on our deck over build on our deck over trailer. We're not going to use a we're not going to use the axle or the suspension, but we are going to use the frame rails. Um, this is 26 feet long, and my de my rollback is 26, so it fills it up pretty quick. But now we're going to get it unloaded.
sure where this is going because we're out of room. It's pretty long too. where I decided to put it for now we'll pick up on that later uh, another video when I get to work on that trailer uh, right now we need to uh, load up the roll back we gotta take a skid steer and pick some stuff up and uh, do a little mowing last time for the year at this property I hope so hope you guys enjoyed catch you on the next one